I really want to make a video about the best and worst heroes for season 13. However, there's a massive patch around the corner and I don't think everyone is on the same page of how it's going to affect the game. Some people think it does nothing. Some people think it buffs 3-3 when ideally I think the devs are trying to nerf it. What do we think? Well, let's discuss. First and foremost, the big changes were to Doomfist, at least it felt that way. The way he plays is quite radically different, but I don't know if the reality is as dire as some people made it out to seem. What were the changes? Well, at first they put on a rising uppercut nerf. Now you only lose your air control for a measly 0.6 seconds. It used to be three seconds, which let you just launch off the map uncontrollably. So his ability to get free environmental kills, that's pretty much gone. And of course, Seismic Slam's range been reduced by five meters, probably significant lowering his mobility a bit, but they added two more nerfs as well. The soft CC of Seismic Slam is basically non-existent now. It still has an effect, but if you're already strafing, you'll basically counteract it. And then also, this is a massive nerf to Meteor Strike. Although the inner ring is slightly larger, by half a meter, it very quickly has fall off damage. Ideally, I would like to see this entire string of patches, as well as everything else that is coming with it, tested by some high level players and scrims and whatnot, but there's a bit of a problem. Contenders is playing on 1.29 for the entirety of the group stage. Overwatch League is off season. So because of that, I think most people's perception of what these nerfs do is purely based on what it does on paper. Let's try to elaborate with some testing of at least how these different changes look. So I think a few things are definitely true about Doomfist. The ultimate feels almost useless for getting kills. An Ana player can easily escape out of its one-hit kill radius. However, it'll still do about 150-ish damage at the fringes, which is still a pretty good guaranteed burst of impact, considering it's pretty forgiving and easy to aim, because unless you absolutely trick the Ana, or let's say McCree, whomever, a slow-walking character, they should be able to simply walk out of the dead zone of the Meteor Strike. But I don't think this is too important because most of the time, Meteor Strike was used as an escape tool, if nothing else. I mean, it's okay in a grav, and it's even slightly better in a grav now, but realistically, it's his other insta-kill combos that make Doomfist scary. His ultimate's more of just a get-out-of-jail-free card. Also, some things you definitely will notice, the Seismic Slam knockup is very significant. It basically doesn't CC them at all. So this means that you're going going to have to be much more accurate with where you land, and in the windows of time that you do engage, you'll have to actually aim at the thing that you're setting up for a combo. And I stress the aim component, it's going to be a running theme, especially when you take a look at the new uppercut. I think on paper, when you look at the rising uppercut's control duration being about a fifth of what it was before, you might think, well, it's completely useless. But even though our Ana enemy here has midair control right outside of that 0.6 second mark, Mark, you're still flying through the air in a predictable arc. So in both these cases, when we're talking about the slam or the uppercut, the Doomfist player, if they're skilled enough and actually can aim, which I think many of them still can, can still use both of these tools to set up for their hand cannon follow-up, but you'll just have to aim it a bit better. The question is, does that create a problem where there's some inconsistency there that Doomfist becomes unplayable? I kind of don't think so, actually. Especially when people were saying that this was going to buff the 3-3 three, three GOATS composition, I think Doomfist looks much worse against characters that do have mobility, but characters that don't, that easily get set up by rising uppercut, isolating them for damage follow-up, whether it's a tank or a healer, they're still gonna feel weak to Doomfist colliding into them. It's the Tracers and the Genjis of the world that have movement options, that once they regain control of their character sooner, have options available to them to dodge out of those follow-up combos. So perhaps, thankfully, I don't actually think Doomfist is much nerfed against the dreaded 3-3 composition, which is probably a good thing. And one step further, with Seismic Slam's max range going down from 20 meters to 15, again, is this the type of thing that matters for a GOATS matchup? I don't think so. This is more of the going to kill your support backline and matchmaking in a solo Q-esque way, swooping down from the darkness like Batman from really far away. This will require Doomfist to play just five meters closer, I guess, to his engage distance, but I don't think that fundamentally changes the character, just sort of reins him in 
to be a bit more reasonable and has no effect against a 3-3. I don't think a good Doomfist player needs these things that are being taken away. It's more so the average, not so good Doomfist player that I think got a lot of kills without needing a lot of mechanical performance. Now you'll need to be better to get that same value, but I still think it's achievable, which seems fair to me because it's a completely insane idea to have a character feel too easy to play and get one-shot kills quite freely at the push of a button. Speaking of Brigida, <laughs> the queen of the meta herself, Brigida, has a lot that I think need to be cleared up about the state of her character and where things were going on the PTR. A famous tweet was made by the pro player Elk saying that the PTR changes to Brigida were a buff. However, he was not discussing the most recent set of Brigida nerfs. He was only talking about the bash through shields component, which sort of obnoxiously stops your ability to punish a Brigida with your own Brigida. This is a bit of a mind meld because I think often when we think of countering a character, we're usually concerned with different characters, but countering with the mirror matchup is quite important as well. And unless you're able to get some sort of cheeky angle to shield bash Brigida in the side by out footsieing her, she can go for a bash but then be completely safe, basically forever. Now, I think the bigger thing about this that people are missing is that Reinhardt's and Winston's especially will be safer now against Brigida, but in the Brigida mirror match, you have less tools to go dislodge her. However, my question would be, we really need to start looking at not playing goats anymore and start testing things that are going to counter it. Overall, people are really worried that that just makes goats more sustainable because the footsie game of you baiting out their stun and then having your own better stun aggressively changes completely, making goats more durable on both ends kind of taking some of the skill component out of it, oddly enough. But of course, this wasn't the only change. There was further changes added on as well, where the shield bash damage got reduced from 50 to five, which seems like a ton, and her healing got buffed, kind of. You see, the thing is with both of these changes, I think they're only really directed towards the solo cube meta and not the team meta where Brigida looks broken. In solo cube meta, Brig looks kind of reasonable, especially when she's used as a support, she's quite average to bad being played that way, you really need the entire kit and caboodle 3-3 three, three composition with speed boost, three supports total, running at the opposition, utilizing that great power creep that the unrestricted single pick format permits. That's when she starts to look broken. And the thing is, although now with the combination of these things, you can't shield bash through a barrier anymore, whether that's a defensive Brig or Reinhardt. And even when you do, you do a bit less damage. But when you're playing in that 3-3 three, three comp anyway, Reinhardt should be hand in hand with your Brigida, giving you enough damage to kill a squishy anyway. It's really only in a 1v1 where Brigida now won't be able to one-shot, let's say, a Tracer, and will only do a little more than half to the health pool of a normal Squishy altogether. And realistically speaking, the best 3-3 teams probably won't see too much of a disruption with this. It's more so with how the rest of the counter-picking metagame flows to try to counter 3-3. The healing buff works this way as well, where it's easy to get distracted by all these other numbers changing, so I'll try to translate what they actually actually mean the cooldown being reduced means that you can refresh the duration of inspire every second now that means every second that you hit a flail hit it'll refresh whereas before it was a second and a half eh like if you're swinging one flail at close range are you more likely to just keep swinging anyway the problem is in a 3-3 composition Brigida is probably all in, into the thick of it, brawling anyway, able to freely chain Inspire regardless of its duration or how fast it is able to get refreshed again, or not fighting at all, making this not matter. This only really matters in the solo queue context where Ana Brig is often the healer combo, and a lot of the times because everyone's not working together, you're in a more standoffish posture, everyone kind of holding their own ground. So in that case, Brigida now is more effective as a actual healer, where if she tosses her whip shot at range in order to enable her inspire passive, it'll then last six seconds instead of five, totaling a bit more healing overall. But when played in her proper way, it doesn't really make a difference. Now, it's going to be really hard to get accurate data on whether or not this can even stop the 3-3 meta from completely dominating top level competition. I think it might be the case that Brigida's whip shot needs a nerf too. I'm sorry to say it. But the problem is, with any bit of focus fire, I think you still do an outrageous amount of damage with 3-3 multi-meleeing into the same target. You see, when Overwatch first came out, 
a barrier blocked just about everything. It was only Ryan's hammer that could penetrate a barrier to a severe degree. Yeah, Winston can Tesla through it and tickle you, but it was a big deal if something could penetrate a barrier. Granted, Bash no longer going through barrier is going to be the interesting interplay that I would like to see tested. Does that mean a Winston bubble can effectively dive against the GOATS comp? It actually does something now, because the tip of the spear of 3-3 is Ryan Bergita and all their melee hits that is basically unpunishable and unblockable. Only Zarya Bubbles realistically punish you from running up on somebody and just smashing their face in. And if the two of them combining still meets the damage threshold to be severe enough to run something over, I think we'll continue to see it be strong. Now, where it starts to look weaker is when you really begin to split up the GOATS comp and make them have rough decisions. If you ever are able to, let's say, block a shield bash with a Winston bubble on a dive, then you probably keep surrounding it and counter it like we all know how to counter it. Countering GOATS was never the issue. We know how to counter GOATS. It's just, can you counter it before they cap the objective and win the game, basically? That's the problem. Because we already can theory craft like, let's just start throwing extra damage sources at all the shielding and just play three, four DPS. We won't engage our tanks at all. We'll play single healer Mercy and damage amp. Maybe we'll put a soldier or a Torbjorn. And I've seen pro teams put in a soldier as a support. It can be really rigorous up against a 3-3 comp, just unload way too much damage for them to handle. The problem is, the quick play S comps that counter 3-3 are so easily countered by other things that they're not really an option in the competitive meta. That's kind of the issue with all of this. And also, restrictions on the format, which I'll want to discuss later, especially in relationship to the testing that Jane's been doing recently with single band, for example, that it's problematic in the meta that if the thing that would reliably counter it gets countered way too easily, it's just not an option, competitively speaking. You're just setting yourself up to fail. Why would you do that? However, the bit of the conclusion to the end of all of this is the question, does the character Ash finally bring enough firepower to the table? Because as I just said, you have to really overload the enemy with damage sources and the Mercy Ash mash combo, bringing a thousand damage with TNT, is that finally going to be enough? Well, maybe. I'm interested to see the top level pros be able to utilize Winston Bubble to create engagements on a 3-3 composition that helps dodge the value of Brigitte Stun, aided by setting up for angles for Ash to carry from a distance. Maybe a Wrecking Ball and a Winston will work because we already know Wrecking Ball's quite strong against 3-3. The only problem is, in my opinion, although D.Va's a really good pairing and Azaria's one I prefer more because Bubble punishes these melee hits that I'm talking about, Hammond's pacing doesn't really go in sync with any character. He moves too fast and sporadic, so it's hard to get him to combo with anything other than a damage source, realistically. He's more of a setup for damage than he is in combination with tanks. Like, he moves too fast, that none of the cooldowns really line up. That duo of tanks is kind of looked down upon because they don't have inherent synergies together, but that's not really the point. I think Pal Driver to set up angles protected by a Winston bubble to try to dodge Brigitte Stun for TNT to land onto the GOATS comp could be a reliable way to counter it. And if a Wrecking Ball can engage inside of the Winston bubble, he can't be stunned if he's at the edge of it. Sounds really hard to do, but I think it's a viable option. And if it is, I think the combination of having a mash getting sniper angles for you to do the heavy lifting damage from afar, who realistically, I don't think can even get chased down by goats at all. I think Ash is just untouchable. The coach gun mobility is too strong. Diva diving the two of them alone simply isn't enough. And the other DPS could be Doomfist. I think Sombra is still really strong against the goats composition. And we haven't even talked at all about how Bob engages in on goats and provides extra tanking pressure, providing a big body that if he can absorb enough cooldowns, which really, a 3-3 comp is all about cooldowns, that's where its most lethal damage comes from, then your actual tanks will get more value, or at the very least be able to run away while still having some point presence, which is the extra problem that any non-GOATS comp going against one has. Sure, you can out-firepower them, but can you win the objective, the point of the game? Only time will tell, but at least for now, those are my early thoughts on the patch that I believe is going to be coming Monday, or perhaps Tuesday, which is the same time that Ash should be going into the live competitive game. I hope both things go live together. Otherwise, we're going to have an even more confusing time where we're playing Ash on this patch, but there's more PTR changes coming. I hate it when we have patchception and it's hard to keep track of what's where, but 
that's my thoughts on everything. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to want to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter, where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.